Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. So today I'm going to be showing you the calling method and how I do it at this moment in time. So as you can see I'm outside, as, as I'm staring up into the blue sky, I preferably go out when it's really nice and blue. I stare up at one point in, into the sky and I focus on that one point. And what I say is, I say this in my mind, benevolent beings in the sky, if you hear my call, please show me a sign, please come to my location, thank you. And I do that as I'm staring up into the blue sky. Stare as deep as you can. And that's just one part portion of the call method to do. And then after I've done this part, what I do is I get a mirror signaler. You can get these online for a few pounds. As you can see here, I'm flashing into the sky. I flash preferably into the portion of the sky where I've done the call method. And then I flash round, just around my location, all around. Now here, here is some footage from a distance, what the mirror signal looks like. As you can see, it's very bright, uh, just a very bright object flashing towards you. Now you do this into the atmosphere, the anomalies will take notice and they'll start flashing back. You flash them, they'll flash you. As you can see here, here's some footage of anomalies flashing back. It really is this simple. You go out with a mirror, go out with the intentions of looking for these objects and they'll flash back. You can see this one flashing from the bottom, very intense. To what, uh, and it's not just randomly flashing in random directions, these objects. It seems to be pointed towards you. Almost, like I said, it's they're giving a sign back. You flash, they flash back. And now you'll be looking at these objects, saying, well, they don't half look remarkably like balloons. Well, we're going to go into depth into that in a moment and hopefully I can try and explain a little part of what these objects are doing. But here's some more footage here of it, the energy dying down and then it flaring up. These are just some of the objects I've captured over the last few years using these methods. And you can go outside and you should be going outside if you're interested in seeing anything. You should be out trying to look for these objects. Now, life up in the atmosphere is not far different from life in the ocean here is an octopus as you could you couldn't see it at first could you it's blending in on the rocks it as a form of mimicry to go unnoticed we're going in reverse here so you can see how it mimics itself into the rock formation there so anomalies are not far different from cellulopods in in the ocean using some form of mimicry to go unnoticed so here's another part of my setup that I'm currently using now. You can see the V550 on the left, and then it's a security camera with an IR filter on front of it, so we can record objects past our eyes' light spectrum. So there's objects travelling up there that we can't see with the naked eye. Only when we're doing the calling method, they're coming down, but you can be able to see them in IR before they come down. So here it is, here's my computer, as you can see here, as I'm, th that's linked up to the IR. So I, when I'm outside, I can have my laptop next to me and I can scan the skies. Here's some footage recorded through IR, as you see in here. Now notice how intense the flashing is on these objects. This is at around 20 times magnification. Or optical zoom, should I say. You can see as it flashes here. Very intense fl flaring from these objects. Here's two objects here. And as you see, the first one on the left flashes. And then the right one flashes almost like that's they're acknowledging each other. Like as they pass each other, it's like to say, yeah, okay, you pass. And the other one's passing by. So they're not only flaring towards me, they're interacting wi with each other up there in the sky. Here's some more of these remarkable objects. I've captured over the last few years from doing these simple methods and as you can see like I said flash them they'll flash you back and they'll start interacting with, with you the more you do it the more you start going out there sticking maybe in the same location for a while they'll keep on coming and coming and coming it really is remarkable so and these simple methods you can just go out and start seeing them it really is that easy and like I said life in the ocean isn't far different from life in the sky as you're going to see here, the deeper you go into the ocean, the more stranger and abnormal life becomes in the ocean. 
I mean, on the top layer, you've just got normal fish, and then you go into the deep, deep sea, you've got these strange objects. And anomalies aren't so far different. The lower they are in the atmosphere, the more ordinary objects they can become. But the higher the object is into the atmosphere, the more stranger they become. It's like, and you can compare that to the mimicry octopus. When it's a, surrounded by something that it might feel threatened by, it's going to morph shape or change its form to throw off the predator. And as you can see, this object reminds me of a tree. It looks like it, like tree branches. And we've had, Jeremy Thomas has actually caught objects very similar. As you can see here, almost looks like a tree branch. And it, as you can see, the object before looked like a tree branch. Here's some of the footage. So we'll do some compare, comparing of life in the ocean here. This object here always, almost reminds me of a, a string that's remaining upright and not tumbling. Jeremy Thomas has caught an object similar to this, as you can see here. The object remains up, up straight and as it moves, wiggling side to side. Now, if it's in, this, if it's in the sky, it should be tumbling. It doesn't make sense for it not to tumble. And this part again, another part of life in the ocean, it reminds me of angel hair. And for people who, if you've done your research, you would have seen people posting this phenomena. Here, here's the phenomena here that's known as angel hair. Uh, people are recording doing solar obliteration, which is half on the sun with, with an object, so you can see further into the atmosphere. And you start noticing all these strange phenomena. Again, this next object here reminds me of a rigid tether that people just go over to a string on a balloon. A rigid tether on an object in the sky is anomalous. It should be swaying side to side. As you can see here, that, that's anomalous. That should be moving side to side and it's not. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed today's video and yeah, give a thumbs up, do whatever you want and we'll just keep on doing more research and more and more. And I hope people can come on this journey with us and start exploring this strange, amazing phenomena. And you know, don't be left out and don't be fooled either. So we'll have some more footage in the future. And yeah, just stay tuned for more. And like I said, the truth is there. You can just have to go out and find it. Peace.